Hi everyone, welcome to Anacademy's online YouTube platform. और आप देख रहे हैं IT Jam Live. सब सब लोगों को स्वागत है इस चैनल में. एक सेकंड मैं अपना लाइव चैट ऑन कर लेता हूँ. Yep, guys, I'm on. So today we'll talk about so who is this uh, anyway so today we'll talk about flow cytometry okay i know the lighting is a bit bad so we have to deal with it so we'll talk about flow cytometry which is an important technique and that you need to know for iit jam or any other examination that you are going to sit for so let's talk about flow cytometry but before that i wanted to tell you that what other courses are going on what else i'm up to and all of these things okay guys so stay tuned for a little bit time and we can start with flow cytometry as well okay so hold for these 30 minutes because if you hold for these 30 minutes then we would not only understand the concept but we would also get some very important information theek hai bahut hi important information milne wala hai video ke ant tak dekhiye theek hai aur ye koi bhi msc level entrance examination hoga ye concept bahut hi zyada pucha jata hai bahut hi important concept hai koi bhi msc level entrance examination ke liye okay guys to stay tuned chalo hum log padhte flow cytometry ke bare mein to flow cytometry या फिर कोई भी टेक्निक वेन यू स्टडी एनी टेक्निक द थिंग दैट यू नीड टू नो इज दैट वट इज द यूसेज ऑफ दैट टेक्निक ओके सो फ्लो साइटोमेट्री सो वट इट इज यूज फॉर फ्लो साइटोमेट्री हैज वराइटी ऑफ यूसेज ओके हाई हाई प्रत्युषा गुड इवनिंग गुड टू सी यू प्रत्युषा नाउ फ्लो साइटोमेट्री हैज वराइटी ऑफ Um, what should I say? Variety of usage. जैसे कि first of all, you can sort cells based on their sizes, their complexity, etc. Okay. Now, you can also sort cells based on fluorescence, and that case it would be known as fluorescence associated cell sorting. We'll talk about it later. But you can also get an estimate. of cell cycle progression using fact sorting we'll come into all of these particular usage and we'll take a live example so at the end of the video once we understand the technique we would take a live example to understand how to look at facts data so we would also analyze how to look at facts data and understand the data and make sense of the data right obviously you can also do um analysis for live versus dead cells so you can check cell viability and check for apoptosis using flow cytometry as a uh, tool right so quite a diverse tool in cell biology flow cytometry is pretty much used as a, a very important tool uh, in uh, molecular biology okay so great so let's talk about flow cytometry and you have to stay tuned till the end of this video it's only going to take 20 minutes so it's not going to take a lot of time but yeah at the end of the video you would get to know a lot of concepts about flow cytometry how it is used so let's talk about it so first when we talk about flow cytometry let's learn about the optics okay now let and let's break it break down the parts that is inside of flow cytometry meter machine because out from outside it's just a box it's just like a dumb box so let's see what is inside so we have bunch of stuffs such as we have the fluidic system a fluidic system is the heart of the flow cytometer okay so then you have the laser module now this laser module is another crucial part of the flow cytometry we'll know why so let me introduce all the part first then we go to the important part okay so first of all what is second um, yeah so first of all we looked at the fluidic system and definitely we have to learn a lot about this fluidic system because this is the heart of the flow cytometry okay second is the laser module we would understand its work then 
there are bunch of detection systems here whatever you can see these are known as photomultiplier tubes these are good light detectors and there would be several mirrors to divert the light in all directions and all but ultimately these pmts they generate analog signal okay they generate analog signal so this analog signal need to be converted to digital signal so that's why you need a analog to digital converter okay and that is the adc unit ultimately that unit converts the data into a digital format and that is displayed on your pc so this is what a flow cytometry graph look like you see some kind of the scatter plot but don't know what this scatter plot stands for so stay tuned until the end of this video it would be very clear believe me okay in reality the flow cytometer does not look like that the flow cytometer is way more complicated i mean definitely the laser module is a complex mixture of different wavelength containing lasers and also there is not one pmt for detection there are array of pmts or array of photo uh, photon detection systems that you have for your uh, flow cytometer and ultimately there is uh, multiple analog to digital converting units ultimately that goes to your C cpu so it's pretty much complicated but if you break down the essential components were the fluidic system the laser system and the detection system the three systems are very important for the flow cytometry module and if we understand why they are important we would get to know how flow cytometry can differentiate between cells so the sole goal of flow cytometry is to differentiate between cell types so we have to look at that how flow cytometry is able to um flow cytometry is able to discriminate between cells okay what are the properties by which flow cytometry can cell okay this flow cytometry can tell you that this is a cell type a versus that is a cell type b so this is very important okay so let's talk about that okay so here first we talk about the fluidic system at any point you have a problem so let me know in the chat section so the fluidic system is very very important um the fluidic system works on the principle of hydrodynamic focusing so let me tell you what is hydrodynamic focusing okay and hydrodynamic focusing pretty much work on bernoulli's theorem okay and i pretty much know that you you guys know about bernoulli's theorem and you have read you read it in uh, class 12 right in general properties of matter so let's talk about what is bernoulli's theorem okay so before going to bernoulli's theorem and what is hydrodynamic focusing let me tell you something so what happens in flow cytometry the cells so which could be a heterogeneous mixture of different type of cells having different size let's say this is a big cell this is a relatively small cell this is a uh, intermediate size right and look at the morphology so these cells are roughly round but these cells are having projections with that so these things are point of differences that facts can pick up how exactly facts can pick up we'll talk about it so till now what we looked at that the hydrodynamic focusing and the laser module is very very important for the fact sorting machine but we also learn that the cell size cell morphology all of these thing could be a sorting um, criteria okay okay so there are two components first of all you have the inner fluid which is in the light blue so this inner fluid is known as uh, the core fluid and there is a sheath fluid which is flowing around it okay actually the sheath fluid is flowing at very high velocity so if you think this velocity of the sheath fluid and this is the velocity of the core fluid the velocity of the sheath fluid is way more than the velocity of the core fluid and also the pressure of the sheath fluid is more than the pressure of the core fluid okay guys as a result what happens the final result is that all of these particles which is inside the core fluid move in a streamline fashion uh, you can think about they are very good ch child in a what should i say in a, in a in a assembly queue and they move like a line right nice line and in a moment we would understand why it is important 
So hydrodynamic focusing is just like that. So you have a sheath fluid, you have a core fluid, both have different type of pressure. These pressure differences is actually determining the direction of motion and the way of motion. Okay. So this motion is very streamlined right now. They are moving as if one by one in a queue and that is important because you can change the flow rate. Ideally, you want very dilute solution for the fax machine and you want them to pass very slowly. That means each particle that pass through, you can sort of capture all of them. If they passed very, pass very fast, so then it is very difficult for you to capture their dynamics, right guys? Okay, so let's talk about what happens. So let's say a cell passed through. Okay, so this cell is passing through this laser module. So laser module is always up. Just to tell you, here is a neutral density filter. So this neutral density filter ensures that the laser does not fall directly to the detector. I mean, you know, if the laser directly fall into the detector, it would make the detector blind. You don't need that, right? Okay, somebody is asking a question. So let me answer that. Yeah, I mean, they are not, so Vivas is asking that whether the sheath, sheath fluid and the core fluid are separated by a membrane or not. Actually, in the machine, they are separated by specific glass chambers. So, they are like uh, fine glass chambers. Okay, so this, uh, so this particular thickness is very low, like in order of, what should I say, millimeters, okay. So, these are like two glass capillaries surrounding each other. Anyway. So this particular cell, let us name that. So this cell is cell A is passing through this laser, right? And the laser cannot fall to the PMTs, which is our light detection system directly because the PMT would be blind and you don't want that. So what you want, what you want to detect in the PMT, you want to detect the scattered lights. So this is basically, these lights are actually scattered lights, okay? So the lights that directly pass through is blocked by the neutral density filter. But the lights which are scattered are actually received by the PMT, right? The scattered lights are received by the PMT or the light detection system. That is one, one criteria of detection. But light is not scattering it only in forward direction, right? Light can be scattered in every direction. So there could be scattering in all possible directions. So side, this light, which are scattering in the side, those are known as side scattered light. And this side scattered light can also be detected with the help of other side scattered detectors. And you use a dichroic mirror. To detect it. Okay. So now it is very important to understand what is the role of forward scatter and the light scatter. Uh, sorry, the side scatter okay the side scatter and the forward scatter are very important okay so this forward scatter and the light uh, and the side scatter determines cellular complexity and the cellular size how will tell you okay so let me give you a two situation first situation is a cell so definitely you get some amount of side scatter light and the some amount of forward scatter light forget about side scatter now let's talk about forward scatter only right now. So you can see forward scatter is to some extent. Now you have a second situation. You have a cell which is smaller, like right? okay. So this is let's say cell A and this is like cell B. So basically, cell B as you can see is bigger than cell A, right? Ah, what I'm writing. Okay, anyway. So as a consequence, you can see there is a change in the degree of scatter. So bigger the cell size, higher the scatter. So measuring the amount, again, I'm telling you, measuring the amount of light in the forward scatter direction, the detector is able to tell us about the size. Clear nahi hua? Fir se bolte. Chalo. So we can simply think the forward scatter, which is detected by the detector is proportional to size of the cell. If the, size, if the cell is smaller, then the forward scatter would be less. If the cell is bigger, the forward scatter would be big. So this is pretty much explaining, the graphs are explaining pretty much the same, right? Um, 
PMTs would see voltage changes. Ultimately, that changes would be translated into a digital output, right? By the analog to digital conversion unit. So I hope this portion is clear to you guys, right guys? I hope this portion is clear to you. That what is the role of forward scatter? We still don't understand how we can look at fax profile, what we can do. And at the end of the video, there is an example which can tell you what we can do. So stay tuned till the end. It is going to tell you. Okay. So here is a big cell, right? So as, well, as I told you that the cell has multiple components. So it has uh, many cytoplasmic granules. It has my, uh, mitochondria. It has all the um, cytoskeletal elements which can scatter light possibly. So these lights can either be forwardly scattered or there could be side scatter, right? So let's talk about the side scatter light. What happens to side scatter? Actually, side scattered light is proportional to the complexity or granularity, okay? That means if the cell is very complex, it has a lot of cytoplasmic granule, then it would be, um, it would be having very high uh, side scatter uh, output okay if it is granular okay for example if you have a granulocyte a blood cell versus a hepatocyte the definitely the blood cell would give a lot of side scatter forward scatter would be different in both the cases because the sizes are different right so we understood understood two different parameters one is the side scatter one is the forward scatter okay and both have their own implication Okay, so let me tell you. So definitely what we learned so far is the side scatter and the forward scatter. Forward scatter give you some information, side scatter give you some other information about granularity, forward scatter give you information about the size. So none of this information alone is very useful. But when you combine both the information, it becomes very handy. And what emerge out as a data is something like that. So exactly this data is out of a fax machine done by me. But anyway, what you see here, the way you look at the fax data as a scientist is look at here. You look at different, different populations, right? So this blue dots represent some cell type A. Okay, so this represents some cell type A. This dot represents some cell type B and this dot some, sometimes represents some cell type C. But what more? Does it tell about how complex these cells are? In terms of size, which cell is bigger? In terms of complexity, which cell is more complex? Does it tell us about those things? Jiha Janab, they tell you about all of these things. Stay tuned. We are going to talk about that right now, right now, okay? Okay, so somebody is... Um, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what type of question come from this kind of part. And you would be amused to know that. But let me finish what I'm going to talk about, okay? So let me take some time and explain what I'm going to talk, okay? Okay, so exactly the fax sort, fax sorting machine gives you this kind of graph, okay? And, and you sort of understand, okay, this particular population might be granulocyte, this particular population might be monocyte, lymphocyte, etc. If you have a blood sample, okay? So how do you know that? So exactly if you have a output like this, so let's talk about it. So look at this data. So first of all, we look at this blue population. Look at, so we, we, we look at this data in a retrospective manner. We know that neutrophil has a lot of cytoplasmic granules. So it is very, very complex in terms of cellularity, right? Cellular organization, it is very complex. It has a lot of granules. Monocyte, it is big, but it has less granules. It doesn't have that much granules. Other lymphocytes might be smaller right it doesn't have that much of granule so you can see clearly the sizes of these three cell types are different right and also their complexity is different now look at it forward scatter so if we draw a line like this and we draw a line like this from here right so what what does it tell you this line so it tell you it has a very high forward scatter high uh, so i'm telling you forward scatter side scatter it has very forward, high forward scatter, very high side scatter. 
so that tells you these are big cells and also complex cells now these are always a relative parameter guys so compared to what this population so this population somewhere falls intermediately it has some amount of forward scatter which is lower than the neutrophils but higher than these lymphocytes right and these lymphocytes here at the bottom is what they have lowest possible forward scatter lowest possible side scatter so just looking at the forward scatter and the side scatter data you can understand blindly understand the complexity of the cells the size of the cells so all of these things is the basis of fact sorting now uh, yeah pratusha asked me that what type of questions could be asked from these kind of uh, fact sorting um module or this kind of biophysics module where they ask about techniques right and the answer is very simple so we wasted our 20 minutes time it might not be a waste it might be a gain for you guys so what we learned in this 20 minute would be very useful because what they are going to ask you is about the principles for example fact sorting in one column other column might, might be hydrodynamic focusing the principle is based on hydrodynamic focusing or might might be telling you sort out cell based on complexity and the size so fact sorting in one side complexity uh, separation basis is based on complexity and um, and the size of the cells so max to max this is the level of difficulty that they can ask you right so keeping that thing in mind we covered all the important point that is important for iit jam if you are preparing for csi or net a bit more is required but in this video we learned a lot we learned about all the optics all the components of the fact sorting machine we really br uh, break it down into bare minimum and we looked at in a simplified uh, diagram that what are the parts we also learned about the fluidic system how this fluidic system works and how it focuses the cell such that the fact system can determine we also looked at how the laser module and the de light detection system work and how the light detection system is able to get information or extract information about size and the complexity of the cells right guys we learned about all of these things you guys are happy with it you guys have a question so do ask me in the comment in the chat so do ask me if you have a question so pretty much you guys understand that what type of questions might be asked so these are all possibilities there is no surety okay guys okay so pratusha is asking what does these points in the graph represents so each of these points are one cell so here these dot represent one cell okay then you would be saying that okay if all of these blue dots are actually neutrophils why these dots are also scattered in place why right guys So, ये चीजों को समझिए अच्छे से समझिए समझ में आ जाएगा इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट नॉट डिफिकल्ट इट्स वेरी इजी एक्चुअली सो हियर इज वन न्यूट्रोफिल ओके सो दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूट्रोफिल हैज नॉट एनकाउंटर्ड एनी टाइप ऑफ सेल्स और एनीथिंग एंड हियर इज अनादर न्यूट्रोफिल सो दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूट्रोफिल इज बाई नेचर अ न्यूट्रोफिल इट माइट हैव अ सिमिलर डिग्री ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी but look at it this particular neutrophil has engulfed many pathogens okay so inside its stomach it has i mean they don't have a stomach but yeah that's a colloquial term so they have lot of pathogens so exactly both of these are neutrophil but their complexities are different because things lot of pathogens are inside them so that's why for example if you talk about this particular neutrophil here versus this particular neutrophil here 
this particular neutrophil has higher forward scatter and higher side scatter that means this particular one is bigger in size and more complex probably this particular one correspond to this particular state so not only facts tells you about cellular complexity and cellular size also you can extrapolate the data to understand the different type of state of a cell a neutrophil is just a cell name it could it could be activated neutrophil uh, dormant neutrophil actively phagocytotic neutrophil all of these possibilities are there guys right guys so that is important now this point is clear pratusha i hope this is clear right guys clear okay so let me give you some information that i wanted to give you okay so i already have published a video about iit gem strategy but let me tell you something that i am launching quite a lot of plus courses and they have already started they are already online so it it's it's going to cover all the syllabus of iit gem so if you know your friends who are preparing you can share this with your friends already microbiology and biological techniques is done in biological techniques we have also discussed all of, about these things so those structured course this this is just a trailer for from that particular structured course guys okay now next what is the benefit of taking my plus course so let me finish i'll i'll get back to your question pratusha so yeah in the plus course there are a lot of things going on we have very nice visuals we have um interactive flash cards we have handwritten notes and one to one sessions we have a lot of benefits guys okay so that's why the plus class plus course classroom could be a beneficial thing for you guys now you would be saying that okay it might charge a lot of money so let me give you a little bit estimate of the money um such that you can register feel free to register so you might go to tuition classes which are boring i mean you might go to your college classes which are very boring and you wish the classes could be a bit more engaging interesting and that's why you go to tuition classes now tuition classes might be moderate to very very expensive it takes out all the budget from your pocket and leaves you without with a lot of headache right that's what tuition classes are giving right now i'm not sort of saying um, bad things about tuition classes but this is what it is they are giving headaches right and sometimes it makes holes in your pocket so now what is different about an academy it's another edit, a tutorial class or a t- educational platform so first of all let me give you an estimate of how much you are spending in an academy right so definitely you have to take some kind of um service so you have to pay something right but anyway let me tell you the benefits the benefits is you can study whenever you want wherever wherever you want you can just lie down your in your couch and you can listen to me right now and i'm not going to see that whether you are lying down in your couch or not so look at it so this thing is give you immense benefit right flexibility right second thing is the price range look at it like if you take a one month course it is going to cost like 2000 rupees and with my code ap10 which is noted here so ap10 would give you a discount of 10% so this would give you a 10% so now your 2000 becomes 1800 per month right it would give you discounts now my recommendation would be like take a long term because this long term that means 800 rupees per month is pretty beneficial let me tell you why so let's say i give 18 courses per month possibly mostly and there would be four doubt clearing sessions including one to one interactive sessions so that brings down the cost to 46 rupees per class man 46 rupees per class that means that much rupee i mean more than that you spend for your monthly or your weekly fast food budget right think about it so you're just sitting in a class for 46 rupees and that's what it is right and 
definitely you would get to know about the quality of education what we are providing in an academy so they are really working hard to bring out like really to establish the quality rather than the quantity so we provide quality more rather than quantity so definitely this uh, interface is pretty much interactive you can click on answers you can answer questions but above all of these things you cannot afford class you cannot afford these classes you have free classes in plus platform in, in sorry in the an academy learning app and also in youtube platform so why are you waiting subscribe to the youtube channel of an academy right now because you get free courses at least a glimpse of the free free courses and that's a lot and at least i try to keep the um, standards similar in both the cases and in the paid courses you can use a uh, lot of benefits for example you can uh, appear for tests you can really get more familiarized with the online interface that ultimately you have to use while you are going to sit for iit jam and definitely your time management your uh, pace management all of these things are happening when you are taking a plus schedule right because weekly there are plans you have to achieve milestone you have to achieve goals all of these things with an expert educator right that are the benefits so i hope you understood the benefit and if you understood this benefit you would tell your friends about all of these benefits and it would be beneficial for you and please subscribe this channel right now and share this link this particular video with your friends such that they also get to know that these kind of courses are there they can utilize their time during the lockdown to learn more about these kind of stuff so let let's come back to pratusha's question so pratusha is asking that um in a heterogeneous mixture how can the machine detect every possible cell type definitely so that work is the function of a fax machine pratusha so fax machine determines all the different type of cell types based on the complexity so there could be 100 different cell type but each of these cell type would be slightly different based on their complexities right guys so that is how they can discriminate right and you can always you can first try a pilot run right so you first start a pilot run and train the machine to look at the data you see okay there is one population here one population here one population here and one population here there are four populations okay so you train the machine okay if the forward scatter and backward scatter range is this much you sort them into different test tube because the cells are moving one by one by one by one in this hydrodynamic focused uh, of uh, fluidic system so in this fluidic system it's like a line so let's say uh, kids are uh, making a big line and there are somebody staying there uh, their teacher maybe and she is saying that okay now you you belong to class 4 you go there you belong to class 8 you go that way you belong to class 9 you go that way exactly that is happening inside the fax machine now this teacher here is basically the laser module and the feedback that is going into the system that means the forward scatter and the backward scatter information that tells you that okay this cell is a different population so this cells of population 2 is very different from population 4 but any cell which within the population would go to a same test tube and that is how the fax machine is sorting out and giving you uh let's say two three four different mixture in this particular example i hope this is clear pratusha right right guys i hope this is clear so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe an academy's channel and yeah share with your friends spread happiness happy learning guys bye guys